So just to clarify, there is no regular Zenfone 11, only this chunky, great big, massive Zenfone 11 Ultra. And I gotta say, as a lover of compact phones, this situation has roughly the same emotional impact as Optimus Prime snuffing it at the end of Transformers the movie. Spoiler alert for that, by the way. Now at its core, the Yezus Zenfone 11 Ultra is essentially a ROG Phone 8 Pro with all of the gaming bits yanked out and a load of AI shenanigans smashed right in there instead. And you can grab yourself the base model with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage for 869 British pound. Otherwise, the Billy Big Bollocks version with 16 gigs of RAM and double the storage is at 950 quid. And if you're quick, there's even a pre-order discount. So the Zenfone 11 Ultra is cheaper than other Ultra phones from Samsung, Xiaomi, etc. But is it just as ultra in the everyday experience? Well, I've been testing out the Zenfone 11 Ultra for a couple of weeks now, had my SIM slipped inside there for a full week, so here's my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So yes, compared with the hand-friendly mini models that Asus has previously pumped out, the Zenfone 11 Ultra is a 6.78 inch Titan. Thankfully, the bezels surrounding that almighty display are pretty skinny, and compared with Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra, it is slightly more hand-friendly. Although, admittedly, that's like saying getting punched in the throat is mildly better than getting kicked in the knackers. But yeah, slightly, slightly more compact, and at least you don't have these sharp corners digging into your palms. You know, the Zenfone does still weigh 224 grams, so it's a smartphone and a workout in one. But it's not all completely tragic news if you fancied yourself a one-handed wonder though, because for instance that Jutton camera bump works nicely as a finger shelf for improved comfort. And you'd also have yourself a one-handed mode to actually reach up towards the top end of that mighty display. So what is the Zenfone 11 Ultra actually made of? Well, you've got a 100% recycled aluminium frame and then around back you've got a matte glass finish. Now here in Blighty you've got a choice of two colours, Skyline Blue, otherwise this here, Eternal Black. Sounds suitably bleak, the never-ending blackness of the void. Whereas in other regions you will get a choice of two other colour options, Misty Grey or Desert Sand. I'm assuming that this is the Misty Grey model. And I really adore that matte finish because you've got that lovely soft texture, so it just feels really nice against your fingers. And no matter how much you fondle this thing, it won't get all mucky. I haven't had to give it a single bit of spit and polish the entire time I've been testing it out. And I also like Asus's sharp angular design pattern thing here. As eloquent as ever, of course, but in my defense it is half past six in the morning and I am hanging like a giraffe's happy sack. Be a similar bit of pattern action to Asus's laptop, so it gives the devices a consistent feel. Just a weeny bit of branding up in the top corner there. Gotta say though, not a fan of that camera bump at all. Not only does it stick out quite a bit, so, you know, aside from the handy finger shelf capabilities, adds on some serious chunk there. And also just looks kind of slapped on there like a prototype model. There's none of the elegance that you get with some rivals, the likes of an Honor Magic 6 Pro, for instance. Apparently, while it's not Gorilla Glass or any branded make around back, it is toughened glass, so Asus has told me. And to be fair, in the past couple of weeks, haven't slapped a case or cover on this thing, and it's still in absolutely perfect condition. And meanwhile, up front, you've got Gorilla Glass Victus 2. No pre-installed screen protector, but thankfully, again, after a couple of weeks of not treating the Zenfone 11 Ultra with any kind of respect, still no scratches or scuffs on there, so that's great to see. And this phone is IP68 water and dust resistant, as you would certainly expect from a phone that calls itself Ultra. So overall, bit of a tough nut on the Statham scale, I'd probably give it 4 out of 5. So, software, and it is of course a bit of Android 14 action on here. And Asus is guaranteeing 4 years of security updates with this bad boy, but sadly only 2 guaranteed OS updates, so Android 15 and then 16. I do, math's good. And that's pretty poor, really, for a premium smartphone that costs the best part of a grand, especially poor for anything that calls itself Ultra. But on the flip side, you've got a lovely clean stock version of Android here, but you do also have the choice of adding a few Isus tweaks. Included, for example, an iOS-style control center that you can yank down by pulling on the right side of the screen rather than left for notifications. You've also got a customized power menu, and Isus has tweaked the volume controls. Which I think I maybe slightly prefer over the original Android one. 
but at any time you can quickly and easily flick between stock Android and the ISUS optimized version here in the system preferences section of the settings. It's just a quick poke and that's it. You could also switch on individual features within ISUS optimized. And you've got a few other familiar ISUS features chucked in there, like the double and triple ass tap, which I seem to be really struggling with at the moment for some reason. Come on, you bugger. There we go. So sometimes it just takes me a few goes to find the right rhythm and get the sweet spot. Or maybe my finger action just isn't quite as good as it used to be. And I do like the Video Genie feature as well when you're kicking back with some YouTube action or whatever. You can quickly activate Do Not Disturb features and even better you've got the background listening. So as you can see this will continue to play the audio of the video even if you minimise it. And if you hibernate the phone too, if you just bump the volume up. But what's the Genshin Impact equivalent of a so as you can hear me still banging away in the background there and then even if we hibernate the phone Barbarians calling their mate a smarf or a gobber or something So plenty to like on the software side of the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra but sadly this past fortnight I have also experienced a considerable amount of jank and it's mostly connectivity related shenanigans so for instance the Zenfone 11 Ultra refusing to load web pages or stream music when I was out and about even though it insisted I was on 5G had some Wi-Fi related issues as well and just other features just occasionally crashing or just not working as they should. Of course, as always, I've been testing this thing ahead of the official launch, so hopefully it's just some pre-launch software jitters that will all get blitzed in an update imminently. And also, for the Zenfone 11 Ultra, Isus is massively pushing its AI capabilities, artificial intelligence, you may have possibly heard of it. And these are very similar to the AI features you'll find stuffed onto Google's Pixel phones and of course Samsung's Galaxy S24 series. And while they won't be available on the Zenfone 11 Ultra at launch apparently, I have been able to test them all out thanks to a firmware flash. So for instance in the Sound Recorder app you've got the familiar transcript feature. And this can automatically generate a transcript of everything that's said inside of a recorder and also create a brief summary. All of this AI related shenanigans happens on the device and a handful of languages are supported to begin with including English, Japanese, Chinese, French, German, Spanish, Italian and Portuguese. Got that right first time mate. He's impressed. Unfortunately this feature is still a wee bit janky. Sometimes that transcription bot gets slightly into an audio file and then just decides it can't be asked anymore. So this is actually a two minute audio file and it's literally give up before the end of the first sentence. I do really like that the summary here is actually longer than the transcription. And also, every time I recorded my thoughts on the Zenfone 11 Ultra, on the Zenfone 11 Ultra, the summarize feature conveniently left out all of the negative bits and reported only on the good stuff. And this happened literally every time I tried it, which makes me think that it's not some sort of flaw in the system, it's actually that the AI is self-aware. If you haven't got a panic room already, it's probably a good time to get one. If you actually make phone calls on your phone, you've got AI noise cancellation to reduce the background noise and also a translator in case you're speaking to foreign types which supports the same features as that transcription feature. And naturally there's an AI wallpaper generator too, which to be honest just as cack as always. Let's do an AI themed one with a neon citadel background in a warm tone and the inspiration can be, oh yeah, heaven and earth, let's do it. And there's the result! Kind of looks like part of a 1990s happy hardcore album cover. They don't really get any better, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Anyway, once again it is early days with the Zenfone 11 Ultra, so I'm hoping for all the jank and chunkiness to be ironed right out. And also, if you've got yourself an ASUS laptop, you can use the GlideX app to share files between them, use your Zenfone 11 Ultra as a webcam, all kinds of stuff. And apparently there will be support for Qualcomm's Snapdragon seamless shenanigans in a future update. Now media fans should certainly enjoy Samsung's E6 AMOLED display which ASUS has slapped here on the Zenfone 11 Ultra. Not only is it massive but it is absolutely stunning when it comes to the cinematic stuff. There's still Dolby Vision support but you do have HDR10 streaming in the likes of Netflix. So they could really spaff out some gorgeous natural looking visuals. Beautiful realistic contrast, you've got nice punchy colours but you can adjust the colour output in the display settings, a few different presets there. 
And naturally, as you'd expect from a premium phone, it's LTP Tech, so the refresh rate can scale all the way down to 1 hertz and up to 120 hertz. In fact, the Zen Phone 11 Ultra can even hit 144 hertz when you're gaming, more on that later. And on the high brightness mode, this thing hits 1600 nits outdoors, so visibility, not a problem. And also, I really ruddy love the fact that Isus has brought that headphone jack to the Zenfone 11 Ultra as well, something of course previously found on the ROG phones. So if you absolutely have to have a headphone port to get wired in, well, this is basically one of your only premium options outside of Sony's Xperia smartphones. You've also got yourself a stereo speaker set up on the Zenfone 11 Ultra, and I'm deaf as f but even I was like, whoa, these things are loud. Let me calm it down a bit, Zenfone. The numbers and junk it says, what phone do you use in your personal life? All of them. And that audio is still excellent on the top volume as well. No crackly, distorty nonsense. Vocals come through nice and clear. Now you've got Bluetooth 5.4 support on here, full Snapdragon sound shenanigans. You've got the likes of Aptex Adaptive and Lost the support, etc, etc. As usual, with an Asus Blow, you've got those Dirac audio presets, otherwise an equaliser you can fiddle about with. So excellent wireless audio if you've got earbuds or whatever that are compliant, and also you've got that wired option if you need it, so audiophiles should be more than satisfied. So now let's have a shifty at the performance and same as most flagship phones these days, the Zenfone 11 Ultra is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, backed by up to 16 gigs of RAM. This right here is the 16 giga. So ignoring those occasional wee bits of shonkiness, the performance has been stunning here on the Zenfone 11 Ultra. And I wasn't at all shocked to discover that I could play the likes of Genshin Impact on the highest possible graphic settings at a stable 60 frames per second. The flat display is perfect for gaming, nice and responsive, and I found that even if I was gaming for a couple of hours on Genshin, that performance didn't stumble, even though you don't have the same cooling system as the ROG phone here. I found that the Zenfone 11 Ultra only got mildly warm near the top end under duress, that was it. And of course, at any point during your game, you can yank out the old Game Genie menu. This has, as far as I can see, essentially the same setup as the ROG phones. You've got loads of tools and features packed in here to help you get a bit of a leg up in your game of choice. You've got the different performance modes you can choose between. High performance, all the way down to battery saver mode if you're just playing Wordle or whatever. You can also keep close tabs on how your Zenfone is faring during your gaming session. And it's inside of Game Genie where you also have control over the refresh rate and you can actually bump it up to that 144Hz mode. However, this can't actually upscale the frame rate via you know, frame interpolation or any clever ass shenanigans like that. So it's only games that will run natively at 144Hz that are supported. But anyway, a bit of Genshin at 60 frames per second was a pleasingly smooth experience. And also packed inside of the almighty Zenfone 11 Ultra as a 5,500 mAh capacity battery. It's one of the biggest battery capacities of any smartphone in 2024, quite apt for one of the hugest smartphones of the year so far. And I never actually managed to kill the Zenfone 11 Ultra in a single day. Most days I usually had around sort of 30 to 40 percent battery life remaining, and that's with you know plenty of screen on time, a good six hours or so. General mixed use, bit of camera action, plenty of video and audio streaming. So certainly suitable for any power users out there and more casual users will happily make it through a weekend on a single charge. And no worries if you find the Zenfone is running a bit low because it's got 65 watt fast charging support. So just about 40 minutes at the plug and you'll be fully juiced up again. And you've also got 15 watt wireless charging support, but this thing's so big and bulky, I couldn't actually get it to work with my charging pad, so good luck with that. And then last up for this lovely Isus Zenfone 11 Ultra review, let's check out the camera tech. And slapped inside of that slightly ugly camera bump, you've got a triple lens setup. And that primary shooter is Sony's 50 megapixel IMX 890 sensor, as also recently seen in the ROG Phone 8, of course, and also in the OnePlus 12R. Two phones not exactly known for their photographic prowess. This comes complete with six axes hybrid gimbal stabilization, so low light shots generally come out quite sharp, even if you've had a few beverages, although night snaps are usually quite murky compared with the competition. You've got the usual AI processing shenanigans for HDR and color output, and this occasionally leads to oversaturated pics, similar to what we've seen on the likes of Samsung and Apple blowers. I thought the Zenfone 11 Ultra can generally cope with strong contrast as long as you're shooting away from the light. 
portraits, mods are decent enough. Occasionally you'll get some background bits merging with your subjects. You will definitely want to take a couple of shots just in case. But wild hair doesn't send the Zenfone into a rage and shit fit and those skin tones were naturally reproduced along with other colours. Now that primary shooter supports two times lossless zoom but you've also got a 32 megapixel telephoto shooter on here with optical image stabilisation offering three times optical zoom. And the Zenfone can also upscale your zoom pics using hyper clarity, you guessed it, even more AI shenanigans, huzzah. Although once you pinch in beyond about the 10 times zoom level, I did find that my pics were still a bit too grainy to look good on a bigger screen. Plus those colours look very different to what you'll see with the primary shooter and also just your eyeballs. But still, just for getting quick close-ups of your kids or cats or whatever, it is good to have, if not quite worthy of the Ultra moniker. And last up on the Zenfone 11 Ultra's optics, you've got a basic 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. You get less distortion around the edges of your pics compared with some rivals, but those tones and detail levels again take a hit. And this lens can't focus on anything that is close up. As for your video shenanigans, where you can actually shoot up to 8K resolution video at 24 frames per second, otherwise if you chuck it on Full HD or 4K, it's 30 or 60 frames per second. And ASUS has chucked in a new super hyper steady feature if you're bouncing about the place while shooting. Although this only works at Full HD resolution, no 4K allowed. And to be honest, I struggled to see much difference between this and the regular stabilisation when shooting 4K video. That's because the regular stabilisation is good, you can still run at pace on a dodgy surface and capture impressively smooth footage. And I was certainly happy with all of the test footage that I shot on the Zenfone 11 Ultra. That focus worked really well, fast to react. You got plenty of detail packed into every frame at my default 4K resolution. And the Ozo audio capture means crisp, clear vocals from all directions. And if things do get a wee bit blustery, I certainly recommend turning on the wind noise reduction feature. Very handy if things get a bit gusty, shall we say. But sadly, however, you can't swap to the telephoto lens when you're shooting at 4K resolution and above, only the ultra wide. And last up for the cameras, you've got a 32 megapixel front facing selfie shooter. And this is actually pretty decent, even in quite ambient light, as long as you and your hand can keep reasonably still. Not a fan of selfies at all, but um, these don't look too cack. And using that front facing camera, you are sadly limited to full HD footage. You can't shoot 4K video using that selfie camera, which again, doesn't feel very ultra to me, but hey ho. And that right there, my lovelies, in a tasty wee nutshell is what I reckon of Asus's Zenfone 11 Ultra after using it as my full-time smartphone. And I gotta say, it doesn't feel as ultra as other ultra phones, and I'm still massively gutted that there's no just regular Zenfone 11. Here's hoping that one, you know, stumbles along in a couple of months' time or something. In the meantime, if you want a premium smartphone that's just under a grand, it's certainly an alternative to the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus, not the Ultra model, and the likes of Google's Pixel 8 Pro. If you're dead set on having the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, then yeah. Of course, most of the advantages of the Zenfone 11 Ultra you'll also find on that Pixel 8 Pro, including the slick stock Android experience, the fantastic battery life, then the Pixel does have the better camera tech. So that's what I reckon anyway. It'd be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Are you as gutted as I am that there's no compact Zenfone 11 just yet? But I'm, I might just go have a bit of a, a cry in the shower for 20 minutes about it. Anyway, let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.